<laughs> Go. Hey everybody, it's training tip to say we're back in my living room. Um, I'm Courtney Cooper, this is, I'm a five star event writer and owner of C Square Farm and a partner in Excel Star Sport Horses. And today I am actually traveling to Ireland uh, this afternoon, which is why I'm dressed a little bit differently than normal. And um, I have been requested to talk about what's involved with uh, shipping horse overseas. Um, what's to be expected, what's the timetable, uh, what are some of the pitfalls and pratfalls, um, what should you worry about, what shouldn't you worry about, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So um, we welcome your questions. We'd love to know where you are watching from as well. So um, to start off, you can buy a horse overseas in a manner of different ways. Um, one way is by using an agent and doing a video. Um, another way is finding the seller online yourself and um, getting videos and doing that. Um, another way is to make the trip yourself and um, set up your own appointments. And then sort of the last way would be um, to go with someone. And so um, I'm actually meeting some clients over there. I also have some clients I'll be looking for and sending videos home for. So I'm kind of doing two jobs. Um, I don't generally recommend that um, people buy from people they don't know um, off of like a Facebook ad or a <laughs> online um, ad. There's just a lot of risk involved. Certainly if you have someone over there that you can have look at the horse, that would help. Um, but I think there's, there's too much risk to do that in my book. And certainly um, that is different. Everybody's different on their risk tolerances. So anyway, so um, you find your horse you want to buy, whether or not you sit on it yourself, you have someone else sit on it, um, you watch a video and really like it, um, whatever way that works, you have a horse. So then you do a pre-purchase. Um, now, I would say in Ireland, in certain parts of Ireland, um, sports medicines vets are challenging to get, um, and so uh, you may only have a selection of a few people. Um, certainly um, in Ireland, in the southeast quadrant uh, where there are a lot of event horses there are a lot of sports medicine people um, because the racing's down there as well and the show jumping and and that's where a lot of the primary sports medicine clinics are um, so you find a vet usually comes from a recommendation and then you decide on what sort of pre-purchase you want and this again is based on risk tolerance um, everybody has a different risk tolerance um, mine is somewhat low um, if I'm going to spend $10,000, which is roughly what shipping and quarantine into New York City costs, um, I want to be pretty sure that if I'm buying a horse to resell, that I'm not going to have any surprises. And so to that end, I'll do a physical exam, which will include um, looking at their heart, eyes, and lungs, palpating their tendons and ligaments, and then um, a soundness exam on soft footing, hard footing, and a ridden exam, a neurologic exam. Um, then I will also scope the horse's airway. Um, I did have someone ask if you would scope for ulcers. Um, I suppose you could do that. Um, ulcers are usually pretty easily treated, um, so I don't usually make that part of my um, pre-purchase. And also if you've liked the horse well enough um, in terms of its riding, usually um, they, if they do have ulcers, they're dealing with them. Um, so it's just not part of my um, construct that I use. Um, the other thing is if you do want to do a specialty exam like scoping them for ulcers or I've even heard of on very expensive horses doing bone scans or ultrasounds, um, then if you do that, um, you have to get permission obviously from the seller and you'd have to set up the exam in a certain way. Um, when you scope for ulcers, for example, the horse can't have eaten for the last 12 hours. So you just have to make sure you set that up with them. But certainly you could do that. Um, and then you get onto the question of di diagnostics and what diagnostics you want and how far you want to go. Um, a little bit of that will be based on the experience of the horse. Um, certainly if you're buying a three or four year old, usually x-rays are gonna suffice um, because you're not gonna, they're not gonna have done anything hopefully to their uh, legs in terms of tendons or ligaments. And if they have, I'm not so sure it makes a good purchasing decision. 
Um, and in terms of x-rays, here in the States, um, I know for most of the pre-purchase items I do domestically, I will have clients take maybe feet, ankles, hocks, and stifles. Um, overseas, I will do front feet, ankles, hind feet, hind fetlocks, hocks, stifles, and then back. Um, so I take um, the whole array um, that I can do. And then I will have those sent to my sports medicine vet here in the United States for their review. Sometimes um, you'll, they'll see something that the vet overseas didn't see. Um, but it's good just to have a second set of eyes, look at the x-rays and make sure that everything looks copacetic and um, there's no real issue. So that's what I do on a pre-purchase. At the same time at a pre-purchase, they will draw uh, bloods usually to ship the horses overseas with. Um, and if it's a mare or a stallion, um, they will take additional tests based on fertility exams, not fertility exams to test the horse's fertility, uh, but reproductive um, exams, I guess is the more proper term. Any questions, anybody? Not yet, no. Okay, guys, feel free to ask me more questions. We did get a lot um, asked before uh, the session, so I do have some of those. So let's say that happens on, I don't know, a Wednesday. Um, and so then the blood work wouldn't get to your um, air shipper usually until Friday or the following Monday based on FedEx uh, times these days. So um, that would be set up to test for pyroplasmosis, um, equine infectious anemia, glanders, and I think there's one other, but those are sort of the big ones um, that you worry about when you're shipping a horse because all of those things will um, stop you once the horse gets into New York and then the horse will have to fly home back to Europe, which will be very, very sad. Knock on wood, that has never happened to us. Neil says hi. Neil says hi. <laughs> hi, Neil. Um, anyway, so, so you do a sort of a pre-check of blood work. Um, the final blood work is taken when the horses arrive in their quarantine site, um, but a lot of times people will do pre-blood checks because that way you have an idea of where you are, um, and certainly if your horse has any of those issues, you can stop them before they do fly. So you do the blood work, um, either the agent um, or the seller of the horse sometimes will put you in contact with the shipping company if they've shipped horses overseas, um, and then they will sort of take the ball from there in terms of getting the paperwork done that you need to get done. If your horse is in the mainland of Europe, usually they fly out of either Holland or um, Belgium. Um, the Irish horses will, for example, leave my partner's um, stables on a Friday afternoon and go into Dublin, and then they'll spend the night in Dublin and leave early on the ferry to go to England and then they uh, travel to their stable in England and they'll spend the night in England and then they travel to the mainland Europe and over to Belgium to a horse hotel where they spend a couple days uh, before they lay up before they go flying to New York. Um, certainly there are other companies that don't have as many layups um, and overnight stays. Um, we have found for us, um, Andrea O'Brien does our shipping um, Equine International. She's fantastic and we've just found for the health of the horses that it's good for them to lay up, be able to spend a night um, clearing their nose and their lungs and what that's done is had the horses land with less respiratory problems. So the horses now are in Liège and they're at their horse hotel and they're spending the night. Uh, we tend to send our clients pictures through the whole process so that they can be involved. And then um, they get on a flight and um, basically they are put on a horse shipping container that looks like a three horse wide um, bumper pole. So it's um, got uh, three stalls across and you load them and there's someone at their head. Um, and just like in a bumper pole, you do a butt bar or a tailgate. And then those are lifted up um, by hydraulics and then slid into position um, in the belly of the plane. And then grooms will travel with them 
Um, the flight from Liège to New York is a nonstop. Um, there are also flights into Chicago, uh, LAX, and Miami. Um, I haven't ever flown a horse to Miami. I've flown several into Chicago and several to LAX. Um, each has a different team of people, um, which are great. Um, the Chicago flights out of Ireland can fly direct. Um, well, are almost direct. They fly from Dublin to Paris and then from Paris to Chicago. And then the LAX flights are also um, from Liège that we use. So the horses then land at their respective quarantine sites. Um, I'll talk to you about New York because that's the one I have the most experience with. Um, when they get to New York, uh, there are two facilities you have the opportunity to use. Um, one is the USDA quarantine up in Newburgh, New York. Um, and the other is a private facility that's located on the grounds of JFK called the Ark. And what the horses do is they're taken out sort of the same way as they're put in with the pallet, um, with the hydraulics, and they're uh, lifted out of the plane and then sit down on the ground and then they're walked. Uh, if they're going to USDA, they are walked through the Ark um, to get their paperwork done and then they are loaded onto a um, horse trailer, which is then sealed until it gets to uh, the USDA quarantine up in Newburgh. Um, if they're staying at the Ark, then they go and um, into their stalls. Again, we usually get some pictures around now. And then um, blood's drawn and that's sent, um, I think to Iowa. And so sometimes there are delays, um, unfortunate delays because of weather, especially this time of year as weather comes across um, from the west and we get some snowstorms. Sometimes uh, the bloods are delayed a day or two, but generally um, the bloods get there overnight. Sorry about that. Um, the bloods arrive and they're worked and then um, what happens is uh, the geldings are let out basically after three days. Uh, two if you're really lucky. Um, and you can get your horse a little quicker. Um, and then you can collect them yourself, um, either at the Ark on Long Island or up in Newburgh. Um, going into the Ark is a bit of a challenge because it's on Long Island and everything's a challenge on Long Island because there's no space. Um, so I usually use a commercial shipper to get out of there. Um, I picked up horses in Newburgh and that's kind of fun, um, but the fun wears out certainly after you've done it. Um, half a dozen times because it's a long drive for us. So again, usually there are other horses coming down to the Pennsylvania, Maryland, Virginia area, and so we do that. And then the horses arrive. Um, the geldings arrive. We'll do mares and stallions in just a just a second. But then they arrive, and um, then usually we set them up the first day. Um, we boot and bandage them. If the horses tend to be a bit hot or sharp or a little anxious, we might give them some sedation to turn them out the first time so they don't injure themselves and try to use a small paddock. And then we let them play for a little while. Um, we're very slow to reintroduce grain. Um, they don't tend to get grain on the trip, just some hay. Um, so we like to reintroduce grain into their systems um, slowly because it's a different product here, obviously. And then um, they will go into riding work. Um, we're pretty quick to put the horses back into riding work. Um, usually they've been fit and horses are remarkable in that they travel exceptionally well as a general rule. Um, if, for example, um, talking about pitfalls, um, one of the horses on the flight tests positive for one of those diseases I mentioned before, pyro, glanders, um, equine infectious anemia, then the whole flight is delayed. And so that can take sometimes weeks, days or weeks. Um, sometimes then they will release the rest of the flight and keep the one individual who's been um, sick. Sometimes they'll even have to send that horse back to Europe, uh, which is a bit of a problem um, for the person who bought the horse. Um, and that work is all done through your shipping agent and your quarantine agent. Uh, we use Tim Duda's company here, Duda International. We've been very, very happy with them. We've used them for years. Um, and we have a team of people that we use there. Um, and they will handle, basically, once the horse lands in New York City, um, they handle everything through um, quarantine. If you have a mare or a stallion, then those horses have to go um, to special sites after their three-day quarantine so that um, they can be tested 
for okay. reproductive um, diseases that are um, specialized so that the horses um, here in the U.S. aren't affected or um, infected. Um, and so that testing, I don't know about stallions because we've never imported one, but for mares it takes 17 days and there are different facilities um, that take care of horses. Um, some facilities will allow you to come and visit. Some facilities will put the horses on the walker. Some facilities uh, will even have riders that can ride the horses and keep them in work. So um, those all um, sort of are done uh, by the individual running the farm. Um, and there are sites, for example, in, uh, in New York, there are sites in Maryland for us, um, Virginia, and then um, certainly Kentucky has um, a very one, a large one for the Chicago horses that are headed south. And so they go there for 17 days. And again, um, some of the pitfalls there are um, if your horse gets sick in quarantine, um, sometimes um, respiratory problems show up after they get out of uh, New York. And if that's the case, um, unfortunately, the mares um, can't be on antibiotics when they're being tested. And so you have to wait until that their cold's clear. And so sometimes that will add weeks um, onto the stay at quarantine. And usually there's, there's unfortunately just time there. Um, but they're well taken care of and the horses do very well and, and you go from there. So that's a little bit about sort of shipping and quarantine and how you get your horse here. We did have a question of how long does the process take? Um, and that really depends on who you're using, um, how often they've done it, um, what the setup is. Um, I know for us, uh, November and December is a big time to get a lot of horses sold. Um, the last shipment that I'm aware of for horses headed into New York is December 19th. And so um, with that in mind, um, our last um, sort of buying trip is early December so we can get horses on that flight. Um, and then they shut down the quarantine um, for the holidays, and then they're back at it sort of the, I think the 5th, 6th of January. So um, we try to get the horses over. Um, and a lot of other people are doing the same thing. So to answer the question of how long it takes, it's um, based on, do you have space on the plane? Can you find space on a plane? Um, because there are limited seats, um, just like personal travel. Um, and so it can take as little as two weeks, basically from when you decide to purchase a horse to when you get it on a plane to when you get it through quarantine up to several months. Um, and like I said, it really is dependent on the time of year, um, sort of what happens in the pre-purchase and the review of the x-rays, um, and then um, certainly shipping and quarantine space. Any questions? No. Nope. 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 Okay, so I think I've answered all the questions that I got um, via messenger, and I'm certainly happy to answer others, but for now, I need to go make my flight. Um, certainly, if you guys want to write any questions to me or send me um, messages in Messenger or text me, I'd be happy to do that. Um, again, it's Training Tip Tuesday, and we look forward to talking to you next week. Hope you guys have a great week. Thanks very much.